All right, so this video is going to be about how I got a job as a mechanical engineer. Um, took the traditional route through school, got my Bachelor of Science degree, oops, here comes Jasper, in architectural engineering with an emphasis in construction management and mechanical engineering. Actually, my first two years, I strictly studied mechanical engineering and transferred to architectural um, in my last two years at school at the university but just mainly your first two years in the typical ABET accredited programs are going to be focused on your math and science classes so you'll go through your calculus courses you go through calc one two three um, your physics courses chemistry my program required up to differential equations and linear algebra which you don't use uh, as um, a consulting mechanical engineer in HVAC. Um, they're just kind of gatekeeping, filtering courses you gotta get through, and maintain your GPA. And then your second two years is more of your emphasis in your, um, your field. Uh, you know, you can branch off into aerospace engineering, mechanical machine design, or um, whatever your university or your school specializes in. So, I went into the architectural construction route, um, some courses on project management, cost engineering, um, architectural design, architectural history. I wanted to get more involved with the construction aspect of it, um, seeing that it was a little more relevant to my surrounding area and opportunities. I never wanted to become an HVAC engineer necessarily while I was a student, because I thought those were kind of boring systems, um, like heating and cooling. and the systems I designed today, but they're everywhere. Um, every building needs a mechanical system basically to be conditioned and ventilated. So the good thing about it is um, there are jobs available in that field if you, if you um, can tolerate it, if it's interesting enough for you. Um, my first job out of school, I took an internship with a construction management firm in the power industry, so it was actually a large um, uh, power plant construction company located here in Denver at the time. And we were working on a lot of um, heat recovery, steam generation designs and coal retrofit projects. This was back in 2008, 2009 when I graduated. My internship was summer of 2008. Um, but I took that internship the summer of, after being a junior in college and I, they offered me a full-time position after I graduated. So that's how I got into the field as a construction coordinator. It wasn't even an engineering position, my first job out of school. I worked that position for a year with that same firm. Um, and it was more of a field position. Uh, so I actually left and went back to school pursuing more. Um, I wanted to get my masters in physics so I did another full semester back at the university and then um, only did that for a semester and then ended up getting a job uh, with a HVAC consulting firm in San Diego um, but that was my kind of my career route how I got into this field and I've been doing basically the same position since um, 2010 um, consulting mechanical engineering and plumbing design um, it really took about two years, a uh, year and a half of working in that position to really get a grasp of it, to get used to the software and the CAD standards and the on the production side, they call it, um, putting the plans together and um, just understanding the project workflow, the deliverables and the deadlines. Um, but after that, yeah, once you're about a year and a half in, you start getting offers from competing firms and you get a significant pay raise uh, unless your firm wants to keep you on. So, you know, you do this career path that I did, you're gonna be jumping ship from here and there uh, pretty frequently in your first five to 10 years in the industry I found. I've worked at several, um, six different firms now, um, each for various reasons, but mainly pay raises and more convenient working locations, smaller environments. I found I've liked working at smaller firms um, they give you a lot more control over the overall design. Um, you do the entire process, which I learned to enjoy, rather than being 
on the massive projects with the big firms. The big firms are cool because you do work on more interesting projects overall, but it's that's all you're working on, I've found. Um, you'll spend an, an entire year on the design of a certain large job, which is fine. But um, I just like the fast-paced, quick ones where you can get in and out of the design and uh, it keeps the variety fresh uh, during the workday with the smaller firms I've discovered. Um, I've worked on some very interesting jobs throughout my career, everything from aerospace to hospitals to satellite factories to restaurants, hotels, residential. I'm doing a lot of residential design now, which are the smaller systems, but um, it's interesting. Everybody needs a place to live. You know, it's nothing special, but at the end of the day, the good thing about what I, I get some enjoyment about it um, as an engineer, you get to see your efforts and your work is actually produced in the real world. So over the course of my 11 years in the industry at this point, I've looked around and seen that, you know, I'm actually helping to build a city, um, like all the projects I see around town that I've worked on. Uh, so it's kind of a sense of you're doing something important in the big picture, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a detailed oriented career. It's not for everyone. Um, a lot of the math and science you're gonna learn in school is not used, unfortunately. I think we could speed up the education process if you wanna get into this field. I think it's more, it could be more of a trade school route, to be honest, uh, not to mention the cost of getting a four year engineering degree is pretty costly um, with student loans and the time required to finish these degrees. But um, overall, it it's a decent career, I think overall. Um, and it can branch in other fields too. I, I sidestepped back into the, cons the, the construction management side a few times. I worked for a refrigeration contractor in Detroit for a year, helped develop a design build department there. So I got to see that side of um, HVAC and R, that's the refrigeration component. Um, got to do a lot of supermarket design, ice arenas, um, industrial cold space storage. So it was kind of interesting learning the refrigeration side of it too. But then I, I went back to HVAC, you know, it's really the same technology, just in a different application. You're cooling a coil as opposed to a, a walk-in cooler. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of variety. I'd say stay focused on it, get in, work a couple years at a position, and you can easily move up pretty fast. Um, from a design engineer, you'll start as, and then once you get your experience and testing complete, you can take the test for the professional engineer's license, which is a significant pay boost. I think I went from earning 60,000 back in 2012 when I was a mechanical designer, to when I got my professional engineer's license, I was up in the 70,000 range. So it was a 10 grand boost. And then since then, each job you, uh, or raise you got, it's more substantial. Um, now I'm in the 90,000 um, area, which is okay. It's not the greatest, but um, now the next step is to move into ownership. At that point, you kind of write your own check, basically, um, depending on how many projects you can bring into the company. So that's the route I'm going down right now, but uh, just a little bit of background on my field. Yep.